This is not the Confederate flag, but it's undeniable that today, this flag, also known as the battle flag, has become synonymous with a certain type of worldview. It's been present at lynchings, hate rallies, and insurrections. In fact, the story behind this flag and the true Confederate flag is weird, complex, and a masterclass in bad flag design. So how did this flag become a rallying symbol for hate, violence, and the oppression of black Americans? This is the curious guide to why the Confederate flag is racist. A historical perspective. The Civil War started with a Confederate attack on Fort Sumter on April 12, 1861, and concluded with the surrender of Robert E. Lee at Apotomox Courthouse in Virginia on April 9, 1865. The Civil War was fought primarily over the South's right to own black slaves. According to Alexander H. Stevens, the Vice President of the Confederacy, the Confederacy's foundations are laid, its cornerstones rest upon this great truth, that the Negro is not equal to the white man, that slavery, subordination to the superior race is his natural and normal condition. Lost Cause ideologies formed during the Restoration period after the Civil War tried to change the recognition of the slavery-driven roots of the Confederacy. This rewriting of history was designed to remove the social shame connected to the tens of thousands of veterans who died for the Confederacy. The first flag adopted by the Confederacy is what's known as the Stars and Bars design on March 4, 1861. The design started with seven stars, adding new stars as southern states joined the Confederacy, resulting in a grand total of 13 stars. This flag was problematic on the battlefield because it looked very similar to the Stars and Stripes design of the Union. So various ideas were thrown around to solve the confusion, including having two flags, one for peace and one for war. But ultimately, these initial ideas were rejected by the Confederate government. In the wake of the confusion, the South rebranded their flag on May 1st, 1863 to the stainless banner design. However, this design proved to be problematic because the predominantly white design made it look like a truce flag of surrender, especially if the wind was still. This flag was also difficult to keep clean on the battlefield, leading to complaints from military commanders. The final flag of the Confederacy came on March 4th, 1865, just a month before the surrender of Robert E. Lee. The final flag design added a short red stripe to the end to avoid that whole no wind surrender problem. However, very few of these flags were ever manufactured, and many Confederate soldiers never actually saw them in combat. So the traditional X design associated with the modern Confederate flag is actually a regimental flag for the Northern Army of Virginia. There were many different regimental flags across the entire Confederate Army. Most regimental flags were variants of US, British, and French flag designs. However, due to early success and large enlistment numbers, the Northern Army of Virginia became known as the primary military force for the Confederacy. This led to increased symbolic correlation between the battle flag and the South's cause to defend slavery throughout the war. The original battle flag was square to save canvas, but a stretched out version of the battle flag was adopted by the Navy of the Army of Tennessee. This flag would later be dubbed the Naval Jack. This is the flag that most people think of when they envision a Confederate flag. In the years following the Civil War, veterans of the Confederacy began dying off. Memorial services for these veterans would often feature their Confederate regimental flag, including the battle flag of Northern Virginia. However, around this time, there was still confusion about which flag best symbolized the Confederate cause. It was very common to see pictures and posters featuring both the Confederate flag and the battle flag, and this confusion continued until 1915. In 1915, D.W. Griffith created The Birth of a Nation, and the film took America by storm. The film featured African-American men acting sexually aggressive towards white women who are saved by the Ku Klux Klan. To say that Birth of a Nation was a blockbuster would be an understatement. It was the biggest film of all time, and basically the equivalent to a modern Avengers movie. The Confederate battle flag was extensively used throughout the film, and excitement towards the white supremacist ideals promoted in the film spread throughout the United States. The result was the reformation of the Ku Klux Klan, which had died off 44 years earlier, 
and the adoption of the Confederate battle flag as a national symbol of white supremacy. The flag would go on to be present at lynchings, cross and church burnings, and it hung as a symbol to create fear in black people throughout the South. In an effort to protect racial segregation and white supremacy ideals, the Dixiecrat Party was formed in 1948. Dixiecrats adopted the Confederate flag as their party flag, hoping to use sentiment towards the flag's ideals to perpetuate their ideology. Strom Thurmond, the presidential candidate for the Dixiecrat Party in 1948, won Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, and South Carolina. But upon losing the presidency, the Dixiecrat Party was abandoned. However, the effort of the party helped to repopularize the flag in public sentiment as a symbol for segregation and white supremacy. As the civil rights movement was gaining traction throughout the United States, many southern states fought school integration brought by Brown versus the Board of Education in 1954. Georgia, for example, changed from a simple design that was reminiscent to that of the traditional Confederate Stars and Bar design to the battle flag that was used by white supremacist groups around the United States. The battle flag would go on to be unofficially used by southern soldiers in multiple wars, including the Vietnam War. Specifically, when Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated in April of 1968, American bases in South Vietnam lowered their regular U.S. flags to half-mast. But in places like the Kham Han Naval Base, the tragedy was actually met with the raising of the Confederate flag and cross burnings. As of today, all state flags, including the Confederate battle flag, have been removed, with a redesign of Mississippi's flag happening as recently as 2020. The best history of the flag can be found from Southern political scientist James Michael Martinez, William Donald Richardson, and Ron McNeish Sue, who wrote, The battle flag was never adopted by the Confederate Congress, never flew over any state capitals during the Confederacy, and was never officially used by Confederate veterans groups. The flag probably would have been relegated to Civil War museums if it had not been resurrected by a resurgent KKK and been used by the Southern Dixiecrats during the 1948 presidential election. In short, if it wasn't for racist white supremacy groups, the battle flag wouldn't be the predominant symbol for Southern pride or the Confederacy. As a result, from a historical perspective, it's impossible to separate racist ideology from public displays of the flag. A sociological perspective. Most arguments about the ethics of flying the Confederate flag aren't rooted in historical facts. Rather, those who actively support the public display of the flag often talk about an individual interpretation of meaning. Most interpretations of the Confederate flag representing something other than slavery usually stem from propaganda campaigns called the Lost Cause Movement, which find their roots in the wake of the Civil War as a way for Southerners to justify the horrendous support of slavery. However, the data about what Americans actually believe about the Confederate flag is very telling. The best survey conducted on what Americans actually believe about the battle flag was conducted in 2020 by YouGov, an international research data and analytics group. Their research featured the largest sample size of any such survey ever recorded. Here are their findings. The plurality of Americans believe the Confederate flag stands for racism rather than heritage. The majority of Southern states believe that the Confederate flag stands for racism. The only exception is Arkansas, Louisiana, and Alabama. And the only group that predominantly believes the battle flag does not stand for racism is non-college educated whites. And Americans who are 55 and older are more likely to believe that the flag stands for heritage rather than hate. So the data is clear. As a result, it's safe to say that if you support or fly a Confederate flag, you're standing for something that the plurality of America views as racist. An ethical perspective. Many of the points in this video have been spent trying to address individuals who have fallen victims to the lost cause propaganda campaigns regarding the true interpretation of the Civil War. However, I'd like to spend this last section talking about a few practical views on the ethics of the Confederate flag. Whether we're talking about the battle flag or the blood-stained banner, the flag of the Confederacy stood for a nation that supported the enslavement of a group of people based on the color of their skin. This is obviously morally and ethically wrong. 
The Confederate flag also poses a pretty huge problem for those who wish to respect veterans of the U.S. military, as the Confederacy killed 360,222 active members of the U.S. military. Any memorial to such an organization on American soil is an insult to the legacy of those U.S. soldiers. I recently watched a video which stated that you have a 1 in 400 trillion chance of being alive today. Against all of those odds, you now sit here watching this video. In the wake of these impossible odds, I simply want to ask, what do you want to be remembered for? Time has shown that those who stand in opposition to minorities always leave a tarnished legacy. Those who aligned with the Confederate flag in the Civil War are now viewed as slave supporters. Those who aligned with the Confederate flag in the early 1950s are now viewed as sympathizers to white supremacy and those who align with the Confederate flag in the Black Lives Matter era will be viewed as those who support systemic racism. If you're an American, you have the right to do almost anything you want. From joining a white supremacist organization to flying a Confederate flag, you have the right to metaphorically plant your flag wherever you want. However, I would implore those who focus on rights to ask themselves these questions. Is it right to symbolically isolate black Americans? Is it right to align with a pro-slavery nation? And is it right to ignore the present pain of others on behalf of a defunct nation? All of these facts from this video bring us to a simple conclusion. Despite individual and communal interpretations of meaning, according to data, historical facts, and societal views, the Confederate flag stands for racism in the United States. From white supremacist movements in the early 1900s to segregation support in the civil rights era, the Confederate battle flag has always stood as a rallying symbol for those who wish to oppress and harm black Americans.